I am here in Palo Alto, and I'm talking to Steve Omohomro from uh, Possibility Research, a thinker on AI, on autonomous systems, and uh, and more of these things. If we look at the uh, autonomous uh, systems, I just got myself uh, an update on my Tesla. Yes. You know, it drives by itself. Is that a uh, first sign of a rich age to come? I think so. I mean, as you were saying, suddenly every Tesla owner, is it all the Teslas or, yeah, every Tesla owner. All the Teslas which are a year, uh, year old. Okay. All the Teslas suddenly have this autonomous capability that nobody really knew was going to be there. And so that's a pretty dramatic shift. Uh, I think that's very exciting and a little bit worrisome. Like now we all of a sudden have all these autonomous cars on the road. And nobody really How good are they? Yeah. How good are they? And what are the risks? And uh, what decisions are these things going to make? Yeah. So you've been thinking about autonomous systems for quite a long time. Where are autonomous systems at the moment uh, mostly used? You know, we don't really have a lot of fully autonomous systems. Today's systems are AI is kind of making its way into basically every piece of technology we've got. So far, it's mostly been at the level of speech recognition, image recognition, uh, simple kinds of process control. We're just on the cusp, though, of having systems that make much more sophisticated decisions. And that's where both very powerful and interesting effects for the world happen and some of the risks and dangers occur. Yeah, because, I mean, if you see the military, they're all crazy about drones and, uh, and, and smarter and smarter autonomous systems which have a goal and which go after it. Exactly. Today, most U.S. drones, there's a person behind them. They're watching through a camera and they're controlling it, though the drones are starting to take over more and more of the functions so that the person doesn't have to do the fine control. Other And in the U.S., there's a law that in order to apply lethal force, um, there has to be a person making that decision. Mm -hmm. Other countries don't have that limitation, and there's a sort of battle going on right now, stop the killer robots, uh, especially in Europe, uh, trying to limit the uh, autonomous weapons for uh, offensive use. Yeah, the Russians are, uh, did they have a nuclear uh, did a sub or something like that? Yeah, it's been reported just recently that the Russians have an autonomous uh, submarine with nuclear weapons on it. And that's a bit of a worry. Wonderful, that, wonderful news. Now, okay, this, you say, this AI and autonomous uh, systems is going to get find its way everywhere, okay? And because I know that AI has been there forever. I mean, I was doing Lisp, I was doing uh, uh, AI uh, on, on business school, and it never got anywhere. Yeah. Why would I believe you that now it really is going to happen? So the original term, artificial intelligence, was invented in the mid-50s. And early on, they thought it would take, you know, a few years. Uh, in the in the mid-60s, yeah. they put a grad student, oh, can you solve the vision problem for your summer project? And because for people, you don't think vision is particularly hard. You look over there, you see a chair, you say, it's a chair. What's, the, what's so hard about that? Yeah, or language recognition or yeah. translation or basic problems which are still not being solved really badly. Every three-year-old has some facility with language. Yeah. So we think... That's pretty easy, whereas playing good chess, now that's a hard problem, right? Only the smartest and brightest humans know how to play chess. And so early on, it was the vision that, oh yeah, chess and things that are difficult for people, that's what real AI will be. And all this simple vision, speech recognition, language, all that's probably going to happen pretty quickly. The reality has turned out not to be that at all. The, the things we think are very easy and natural have turned out to be very, very challenging. And there was a tendency to overpromise. Groups would say, yes, in five years, in 10 years, we're going to have the best thing. So, okay, I, I, don't worry about the past. The past, all the promises didn't go. When yeah. will it happen in the future? Where, how is AI and autonomous systems uh, in 2015, how will that develop in your eyes? Well, so it's a cautionary tale. The past is a cautionary tale. People thought we're very close in the past, and we weren't. It does seem that things are different now. In the past two or three years, uh, there's a technology called deep neural networks, mm -hmm. which are kind of, you know, neural networks trying to build circuits and, and programs that are operate very much like how we think the human brain operates. Mm -hmm. um, people have explore been exploring that since the 60s. And a lot of excitement in the 60s and then around 1970. Go to the out. future. Go to the future. Okay. I don't want any more past. Well, just in the last few years, um, yeah. 
neural nets like the old ones, but with many more layers, with a lot more training data, and with much faster computers, have been able to beat humans on a whole range of, of tasks. Okay. So like, that's a very promising. Like what? Well, so the, there are these uh, training sets that people test against for oh, uh, character recognition, for handwritten digits, for speech recognition, for translation, for object recognition, for putting labels on uh, images, things like that. Okay, so if you now look at the uh, investment which is going on in the venture capital, they're now investing billions of dollars. I mean, we saw that Google bought a whole lot of deep learning companies and is into robots. Is, is this really something in five years which is going to influence our life? I totally think so. Uh, McKinsey did a, a very interesting report looking at um, the technologies which are likely to have the biggest impact over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if you add up all their technologies that are AI and robotic related, it's a $50 trillion impact on the economy over the next 10 years. Yeah, one time gross national product. But I mean, what, I, apart from the thing I, you have behind you, I see here an echo. If I say, uh, Alexa, Alexa, how many people in the Netherlands? The population of the Netherlands is about 16,900,000. Thank you. Now I know. So that's like Sierra, but then uh, you know a product from Amazon.com, yep. and uh, which is a, which is a practical robot uh, doing something for you. Ninety nine dollars, and uh, it plays music. It tells me what time it is, and every week they do an update, sort of like your Tesla with the yeah. self driving stuff. Yeah. Every week, t um, she knows more stuff. And the recognition, the voice recognition, is pretty okay. Yeah, you know, I, I, it seems to recognize me very well. I have a number of friends that have accents. And sometimes there's a little bit of a struggle, but uh, she's remarkably good. If you, uh, what do people here in the Valley think about autonomous driving cars? I mean, which is also a robot, which will help us out a great deal. How, how fast will that come about? You know, um, the technology, I think, is going very fast. Uh, Google has been experimenting with self-driving cars. I don't know. I've seen them on the roads for probably the last five years, something like that. Um, now every country in the every company in the valley seems to be working on it. There, you know, was this mysterious self-driving car that nobody knew what it was, and it went into the Apple parking lot. And now I think Apple is being more open about the fact that they're doing a car. Mm -hmm. Apple doing cars—that's kind of a strange thing. Mm -hmm. Certainly, you know, Volvo, Mercedes, all that. It's really the talk of the town here. I would say so. Yeah, you know, th that's maybe the first very high impact application of AI and robotics. Mm -hmm. That if you know all driving were replaced by self-driving cars, it would eliminate huge numbers of uh, accidents and harm to people, could pr dramatically lower costs, it could dramatically lower uh, you know, problems of parking, all that kind of stuff. And so really big and very positive. I would say for the most part, you know, there's the risk of your self-driving car running into people, killing people, so you gotta watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Pretty clear downside. Um, but the upside is is very very visible, and so you're yeah, working on a book on this uh, whole subject. Where when is it coming out, and what uh, what will be in it? Well, actually, two books. So I'm developing some new technology that um, is both about how intelligence works, how intelligence fits into our society, and where it's going, but also how to manage it because. As these systems become more intelligent, they also become less predictable, and there are a lot of potential unexpected, unexpected consequences mm -hmm. that we need to watch out for. And so I believe we need a new management system that our current legal system is really not sufficient for managing what's coming. Wow. Legal system and legal changes to, um, to keep those autonomous systems into, uh, into balance and to make sure that they're programmed, these, re these rules need to be programmed into the systems. Yeah, I think both we need to make the systems themselves have values which are aligned with humans, so they're not behaving in ways that humans find uh, very negative, and we need to create a new social contract that includes these new systems which are coming and ensures that they behave in positive ways, creates incentives, even for systems which were not programmed in a very uh, positive way, we need to make sure that they don't run amok and behave yeah, badly. The, the, the Geneva Convention needs to be programmed into the uh, military systems. Yeah. Any, I mean, is this, this wonderful idealistic uh, thing? Will they, I mean, morals, and laws are uh, are are very much, uh, you know, not not followed by human beings. Will they be followed by the robots? Do we have any chance to to get those kinds of laws into systems uh, into the system? 
Well, we've got a whole bunch of new technologies for organizing groups of humans or groups of societies right now. Um, we were talking a little earlier about uh, cryptocurrencies and particularly Ethereum, uh, a new cryptographic technology that enables people to make contracts with one another. Uh, or with systems. Or with systems, exactly. Yeah, initial, today it's mostly human users, but very rapidly, Ethereum is probably the most developed of these systems. People talk a lot about DAOs, de decentralized autonomous organizations, which are little entities, software entities, which can buy and sell things and make things happen, make contracts with humans and with other entities. They're like little you know, organizations, little corporations. With without, rules. Yeah. With all based on rules, without necessarily any humans involved. Now, this has good and bad aspects. The good aspect is these potentially can manage a lot of the structures of society in a way that is much more predictable and reliable than humans. Like you can make sure that they're not corruptible, for example. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we were, as we were saying earlier, um, if you have laws which are absolutely going to be enforced, got to make sure those laws are good laws. And today we generally, you know, things like the speed limit are kind of more like guidelines. And, you know, we have a kind of laissez-faire attitude to our, our legal system and how it relates. And I think that's changing rapidly. Okay. So an insight in AI, it's finally coming to our place, you know, starting with the uh, Alexa or the Echo, I think Echo, is the yeah. Echo, which is a cheap uh, robot. It's coming to my car, but it's, um, the, uh, the systems will be smarter than humans in all kinds of different aspects. And how are we going to make sure that they behave morally? And how is our legal systems going to be in there? Which websites can we follow? Uh, Self-Aware Systems uh, it deals with a lot of the risks. Uh, your website. That, that's the first one, selfawaresystems.com. And then possibilityresearch.com is for the, the new technologies. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. So this came out of Palo Alto, one of the starting places of Silicon Valley. Every corner of the street, you have interesting people talking interesting subjects.